Hello and good afternoon and welcome to this quick video tutorial on the update to the CCNA routing and switching curriculum. Uh, so as you can see, uh, I just got this email today at 1.03 p.m. and wanted to share some of the information. They've got some exciting stuff going on with the Cisco CCNA uh, routing and switching curriculum. So for the Networking Academy, you can see here that the new 6.0 routing and switching bridging course is available to all instructors and so what that means is we're gonna have some new topics coming online and this is the same thing that happened when the CCNA routing and switching curriculum for the Cisco Networking Academy transitioned from the version 4 curriculum to the version 5 well now we're transitioning here about two years later about two to three years later to the uh, 6.0 material and let's take a look at some of the topics here we've got some really really exciting stuff uh, that we're going to be looking at here shortly so in the introduction to networks course or introduction to networks course they're going to be adding an extended trace route we're going to be taking a more uh, granular look at debugging and we're going to be looking at network troubleshooting uh, in the routing and switching essentials course we're going to be looking at host routes in other words those slash 32 routes. We're going to be looking at device discovery, which could be LLDP or CDP. Remember, CDP is at Cisco Discovery Protocol, at Cisco Proprietary. And then you've got LLDP, which is the Link Layer Discovery Protocol, and that's the industry standard. They're going to be taking a look at NTP, right, of the Network Time Protocol. And a popular topic among a lot of new learners is password recovery. So when you show up at class, maybe somebody from a previous class uh, from that day logged onto the equipment and they've already made some changes and they changed the password and you don't know what it is. So they're going to be looking at password recovery. And that basically is the line right there where we're talking about sort of the ICND1 curriculum, also referred to as the CCENT certification. And these are the first two courses. Now, the next two Networking Academy courses, we've got Scaling Networks. They're going to be getting into the VLAN trunking protocol. We're going to be talking about extended VLANs, those VLANs 1,006 and above, up to 4095. The Dynamic Trunking Protocol is going to be looked at. We're going to be troubleshooting some multi-VLAN issues, and they're going to start to talk about a CCNP topic uh, that you find in the CCMP switch course, and that is switch stacking, right? So you create a logical switch out of multiple physical switches. Now, the current curriculum mentions HSRP very briefly, uh, along with GLBP and VRRP, uh, and it's literally a paragraph where it just basically says that, hey, uh, these are first hop redundancy protocols. So it looks like in scaling networks, you are going to get to implement HSRP and they're going to be doing troubleshooting multi-area OSPF. So if you're not familiar with the LSA type threes, the type fours, the type fives, I'm not sure how deep they're going to go. Maybe you might get a look at a type seven LSA from a uh, totally not so stubby area. Um, but again, you're going to be troubleshooting multi-area OSPF. And then in the final course, and this, uh, especially this textbook here, was in desperate need of some additional material. Uh, it was very, very slim, uh, and this is definitely going to bolster the size of the book. So um, my hope is, is that they've done away with frame relay. Uh, on the CCMP and the CCIE uh, exams, um, and on the CCIE side, especially on the lab side, DMVPN is the non-broadcast multi-access topology of choice and so or technology of choice so frame relay again sunsetting uh, not being used uh, as much as it once was and dmvpn really becoming the sort of predominant technology in that space so you're even going to be doing some ebgp or external border gateway protocol work as well as pppoe right which is just basically the point-to-point -point protocol over ethernet so again right out of the gate we've got three pretty significant topics here 
that are all going to be part of this Connecting Networks course. You're going to be taking a look at some IPv6 ACL errors, some security best practices, and another CCMP topic that we go into uh, in the Switch course pretty deeply here is the SNMPv3. The same thing with the SPAN. Uh, if you've watched any of my previous videos from my Switch course, you'll notice that we had the SPAN, R SPAN, uh, and then I briefly spoke about ER SPAN, uh, but that then kind of segues into the CCIE uh, type topics. We're going to be looking at quality of service or QoS, right, in that final CCNA course. And here are the two big ones. And these are big, not because of the amount of material, uh, although I'm hoping that they uh, do quite a bit in this area because these areas are becoming huge in the networking industry. Uh, you want to become a full stack engineer? Well, you definitely need to know about cloud. My guess is maybe there's going to be some Amazon Web Services discussions going on there and virtualization. And then another big one is going to be network programming. Are they going to be talking about uh, OpenStack possibly? Maybe Python? Uh, for those of you not familiar with Python, it is an object-oriented uh, programming language, but very easy to learn uh, and very easy to, uh, to implement. And so uh, these two topics here, along with the top three topics, are going to make the Connecting Networks course a very, very formidable course. So now you're probably asking yourself, well, wait a second. So the Cisco Networking Academy courses are changing. What does that mean for me if I'm pursuing my CCNA certification? Well, let's take a look at that. Let me go ahead here and let's roll down just a little further. Uh, and the bridge material right for instructors is available uh, with some instructions on how to incorporate those topics into your version 5 curriculum right to kind of give a soft landing to the learners that are out there uh, who are trying to pursue that CCNA certification now here are some important dates uh, to take a look at here and you know technology is always evolving that's one of the things I love about it uh, but this is also one of the challenges. So you can see here the first certification exam, or I should say the CCENT certification, uh, which is really the ICND-1. Here is the current exam number. So if you were to go to Pearson View today, and I actually did this, this is the exam that you're going to see. Well, take a look at the old exam end of life date. You can see here that the old certifications exams will be available for 90 more days, as noted in the table below. So August 20th, 2016, the 100-105 ICND-1 exam, that is your new exam, right? And that is a terrible arrow there. So that is your new exam. And that is even a worse arrow. All right, so that's your new exam on August 20th. On September 24th, the ICND-2 exam is going to change, and it's going to become that 200-105. And you can see here it's for that ICND-2 certification. Now, this is sort of important. Remember, if you take these two exams and pass both of those exams, whether it's the old exam numbers before the deadline here, or the new exam numbers when they become available, if you take these two exams, you will get your CCNA certification, or you can simply take the single CCNA routing and switching exam. And again, on August 20th, 2016, this is going to be the new active exam. So these are the old exams here, right? And here are the new counterparts that are going to be available August 20th and beyond. So this is important because if you're thinking about pursuing your CCNA uh, and you've been studying the version 5 curriculum, which is the current curriculum, you may want to step up your studies uh, and step up your testing date if you were looking at testing beyond August because after August 20th, and September 24th here for the ICND-2, 
right? You're going to need to qualify with the new set of exams. And so if you're asking, well, what's going to be new? Well, it's going to be all of that material that we just looked at. So all that new material, DMVPN, PPPOE, um, EBGP, SNMP V3, all of those topics are now going to start to play a more prominent role in the new exams. And that includes that network programmability. It also includes the virtualization uh, and possibly uh, something to do with cloud, right? You're going to start to see some cloud information float in there. So again, if you're in the process of studying, keep these dates very close uh, to your calendar so that you get in and test before these dates hit or else you're going to end up taking the new exam which my guess is you're going to be looking at a lot of new material that you haven't to date had a chance to cover. All right, so just a review. You've got your old exam dates right here. I'm sorry, your old exam end of life dates. And that's when those exams are going to sort of uh, wither on the vine and, and be removed from the books. And you're going to need to take these three exams or a combination of these three exams, either these two together or just simply the CCNA route and switch. But it's going to be the new exams and the new exam numbers. And keep in mind that if you get caught uh, and you're studying for the current curriculum and you don't get in and test before the 20th of August or the 24th with the ICND 2, uh, chances are you're going to see a lot of this new material on the exam and I was actually told that uh, this exact same thing is going to be going on with the CCIE curriculum as well where you're going to start to see network programming cloud and virtualization start to become a more predominant topic uh, within the curriculum and the requirements in order to certify all right so that's all I've got uh, if you're a CCNA student out there uh, again, remember, let me actually scroll the other way here. Remember, you've got some end-of-life dates coming up here. So if you're going to go after that CCNA, you better hurry before the end of, uh, or say, the 20th of August uh, when those when the full CCNA and the ICND-1 are going to basically expire and you're going to have some new exams that you're going to be looking at. All right, guys. Well, hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully it gives you a uh, maybe a little kickstart or a little motivation to get out there and get it done before the exams update. All right, have a great day, and I'll see you guys soon.